Hello, this is Darlene, and this is Penny, who you're watching right now. Yes, you're my Penny. And um, she's going to watch while I show you how to weave a fast, fabulous pouch. If you've ever wanted to try weaving, this is a great way to start because it's a quick project and it has a wonderful result, something very functional and it's fun to do. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to warp the loom. You'll need a sturdy piece of cardboard. This is mat board um, or the back of a legal pad would do. Uh, cereal box cardboard is not strong enough. You'll need a couple of big eyed needles, either plastic or metal that you can get in any craft store, and some yarn. And the great thing is you can use up yarn that you just have little bits around and have still a great project. Now you're going to draw a line across the top of your cardboard about a quarter of an inch down from the top. And then mark every quarter of an inch along that line and you're going to cut a slit down to the line just like this. I'm not sure if you can see it better on the white side or the black side, but that makes a lot of little tabs at the top. Now with any weaving project where you go round and round, you've got to have it offset each row. So you've got to have an odd number of warp strands. And the funny thing about math is that doubling any number makes an even number. So we have to add one more slit here at the bottom and that creates the odd warp. So we are going to start the warping process at the opposite corner as that bottom slit. And the nice thing about this project is that you can cut your cardboard any size you want. So some of the little pouches I've made are just right for jewelry or a little stone collection or something. This one is the right size for a smartphone. So you can customize your loom. Alright, so I've tied it to that um, tab and I'm going to come down and around and back up. Now the thing about this is each time you come to the top you're going to go around one of these tabs and back to the same side. And then we're going to go down to the bottom, flip and come back up again. And I'm going to go in that same slot that's next to this loop. Remember you're not going to go down, you're going to go around the tab and down. Come back up again into that same slot beside the loop. Remember you're not going to go down but you are going to go around that tab. Oops. Around the tab. Sometimes you have to hold it to make it go in there and down. Let me straighten this warp a little. At the bottom is when you go around and back up. Around the loop and down. And you can start to see a pattern of an empty tab a dotted line, an empty tab, a dotted line, an empty one. And you'll see the same pattern on the other side, a line, empty, a line, empty. And that's the way you self-check this so that you know you haven't made a mistake. And what we're actually doing is creating loops that when you take it off the loom will hold either side of your pouch um, all the uh, weft ends on. So you continue like that all the way across and then after you've gone around your last tab you come back down here to the bottom and go through that slit and tie it off. So if you need to watch this part of the video several times warping is really the only complicated part of the whole process. So once you get it all warped up you're good to go. Now you can weave just over, under, over, under, over, under and have a beautiful effect. You can weave stripes, horizontal stripes, by just changing color. And as you can see, you can make them as fat or as skinny as you like. Um, you can see that I've been weaving and it's going to make vertical stripes. You can see the blue stripe and the pink stripes starting to happen. And the way you do that is you have a yarn on both needles. I've got a blue yarn and I've got a pink yarn. And each time you go around, you switch yarns. So after I have gone around once with the pink yarn, you can see I just finished up with the pink. 
I'm going to start with the blue. And what happens is, when you alternate every row like that, every time you go over a warp strand with the blue, it's going to cover the warp and make the blue stripe. And when you go under the next one, that will allow the pink on the next row to make that vertical stripe. Now the thing you have to remember as you go around the corner is you want to keep your pattern. So we're over, under, so we're going to be over this next warp thread as we go across. And with all weaving, you're going to remember that you are not going to pull hard to the side like this. You're going to make it nice and loose and you're going to pack it down. So that packing down motion gives it lots of room to make that stripe and you want to make it loose enough that it can go around all these threads. Alright, so I've shown you these nice vertical stripes. Now how do you do this checkerboard? Well, once you've started the vertical stripes to make the checkerboard, you're just going to go around twice with the same color. So as you've seen, we just did the blue and instead of switching back to the pink, I'm going to continue with the blue. So I'm over here, so I'm going to go under and over and under and over all the way across. And remember, you've got to go around both sides of the loom. And the tape, you didn't mention that. And so we've gone around. We're going to go around a second time here. So we're going to have a double row of blue, just like that. All right, now what that does is it's going to make your um, pink and blue stripes switch. So now I'm going to start with the pink over and under, right above the blue. And you can see when I pack it down, now the pink is covering the warp that the blue had been covering. So we're going to keep going around one row of pink, one row of blue, and you're going to have uh, a second set of stripes. And then you're going to double again and switch back. And each time you do that, it's going to change. So here the yellow is covering and here the the rust. Here the yellow, here the rust. So as many times as you want to switch that up, you can make as big of a checkerboard as you like. So that's the checkerboard. And then as you get near the top of the loom, you're going to start to notice the loops are going to um, feel like they want to fall off. So what I do is after I've warped it up, I just put a piece of tape like this over the top of these loops so that it holds everything on while you're weaving. You don't have to worry about those loops popping off. But as you get to the very top, you're going to have to take that tape off to weave up near the top. And it's going to take a little more time because it's tighter up here. All right, now this one I wove in a very fast pattern. Can you see these diagonal stripes? Well, diagonal stripes are created by weaving over two, under two, over two, under two. And so each time you go around it shifts and it keeps moving it over, moving it over, and it creates this great vertical stripe. Now the only instruction I have for you if you want to weave this way is the first four or five rows at the bottom need to be plain weave, regular over, under, over, under, and the last four or five rows at the top need to be plain weave because with this over two, under two, sometimes the loops don't get locked in properly or the bottom locked in properly if you don't have the plain weave there. The over two, under two is fabulous because it's really fast. You have half of the needle moves. All right, so to take it off, um, when you finish weaving, uh, you remember that last uh, warp strand, that first one that we tied off up here, that was our first warp strand, when you finish weaving, that's the strand you're going to tie to so all your ends are together. And the same when you start. You're going to start off at the bottom tying off to this warp strand that was ended at the bottom. 
so that you, all of your uh, threads are tied together. To take it off, it's very easy. You're just going to use your needle and pop it off the tabs. Now you might notice that I've got lots of tied ends here. You know, it looks kind of messy with all the tied ends. Well, that's the other really wonderful thing about this style of weaving. Um, once you take it off the loom, you're going to turn it inside out. So what you see right now is actually going to be the inside of the pouch. Now you can start see these loops that I've popped off. It's great. It's going to hold all the weaving on. The, the weft can't get off because you've created those loops. And it's fabulous because there are no um, warp ends to tie off when you're done. You don't have any at the bottom because you made that loop around. And you don't have any at the top because you've got this loop on top. So one of the things I always hated the most about, um, about weaving was tying off all those those uh, warp ends. So once you get all your loops off, you're just going to slide it off the cardboard, just like that, and we're going to turn it inside out, and it'll look nice and neat. You won't show any of your loose ends, and you've got a great little pouch. Now, if you like, you can make use of those little loops at the top, and um, this has got a drawstring put through the loops. And this one also has a little drawstring at the top that was put through the loop, so you can tie it closed. Um, or you can just uh, scoot your weaving up a bit to fill in those loops and make it not look so loose. So I hope that you'll try this project. It's a lot of fun. And, um, and I thank Penny for joining us today. And um, I hope you will weave this project soon.